the night, you're looking for trouble. It's sort of like walking through this road of blood here. If you're walking through there, you have to expect to get some trouble. So this man gets beat up, robbed, stripped, and the Bible says that he's half dead. So two Jews walk by this helpless man, a Levite and a priest, and kind of just walk, walk around him on, on the other side. And um, what's significant here is that the man was Jewish. So instead of helping their own blood, they just, they just walk on the other side. So if not even his own people helped him, who's going to help this man? It's, he's kind of helpless in the situation, in his mind. But an unlikely hero comes into place. A Samaritan helps him out, which brings another spin to the story because there was actually tension that exists between Jews and Samaritan. Us Brooklyn folks like to say there was beef. So, um, going back to 600 BC, the Jews were exiled, exiled out of their own land by the Assyrians. And um, later on, a few years down, the Assyrians tried to accept them back. But what happened was, there were some Jews. When the Jews were exiled, there were some Jews left over, and they got into foreign marriages with the Assyrians, therefore they became known as Samaritans. The, the Samaritans didn't want to accept the Jews back, and therefore there was a sort of resentment, and that resentment only hardened over time. You even see this in the Gospel. Jesus was called a Samaritan by a Jew as an insult. And just in chapter 9, he was rejected by Samaritans because he was a Jew. So, in verse, in verse 33, we see... The Samaritan traveled and came where the man was, which leads me to my first point, is that good neighbors go where no one else wants to go. The Samaritan sees this helpless man, and the Bible says he takes pity on him. The New King James Version says that the, man, the Samaritan had compassion on him, which means his heart went out to him. He didn't care about the circumstances. He didn't care about the beef that was between them. He didn't care about where he was. All, he, all his concern was only to help this man because his concern for this helpless man was greater than his concern for his own safety. And you see, us Christians love to pick and choose who our neighbors are. We love to pick and choose who, who, we, who we want to love. We don't go into certain neighborhoods because it's so-called dangerous. We don't want to dirty our clothes or, or step into these dangerous neighborhoods. But these are the areas where there are hurting people. And these dangerous areas is where there are hurting people. And if we want people to come as they are, we must go where they are. In verse 33 to 35, it says, the, the Samaritan took pity on him. He went on him, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, which leads you to my second point. Not only the good neighbors want to go when no one else wants to go, but good neighbors give up what they value for the sake of others. Now the Samaritan gives up stuff that are worth something. You see, he poured oil and wine. Now wine was used for festive activities back then, so that means it wasn't cheap. The man... The Samaritan let the man sit on his own donkey and walk beside it. So that's like putting someone dirty in your brand new 2014 Honda Civic. You know? yeah. And listen, if, if I gotta walk, then that, that's a problem there. If I got my own donkey and I gotta walk, then that's a problem. I know I wouldn't do it. But, but instead, he has compassion, lets the man sit on his own donkey. He pays the innkeeper two denarii to, to take care of this helpless man. Two denarii is worth two days of wages. That's a tough thing to let go. I, I, sometimes it's hard for me to let go of tithe. I imagine two, two, two denarii. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy. And um, this, this actually spoke to me because me, uh, I can be a little transparent with you guys. I value money. And uh, I know I'm, I'm not the only one here. Money is something that's very hard for me to let go. And it's something that God is still working in me. But... It's very hard for me to, to be able to pay someone's lunch. It's very hard for me to be able to, to give out a couple of dollars if the person doesn't have any because I value it so much. But an important aspect of compassion is generosity because you can't be compassionate and cheap. Mm -hmm. the, well, if you want to experience the true meaning of compassion, you have to be prepared to give up anything so that person is more comfortable than you. So if it means maybe going that extra mile or extra gallon of gas to take that person home, then let's do it. If it means giving out a couple bucks to pay for this guy's lunch, then let's do it. Let's show compassion to these people. Luke chapter 10 verse 35 says, The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. He said, look after him, he said, and when I, when I return, 
I will reimburse you for any extra expense I have. So not only the good neighbors go where no one else wants to go, not only do they value, not only do they give up what they value for the sake of others, but good neighbors follow up. So the Samaritan tells the innkeeper, when I return, meaning that he's going to come back, that this relationship with this helpless man was not just a one-time thing. And how many times have us Christians shown compassion just one time but never follow up on that person? We act like we love that person, but yet we never call them up during the week. I know so many, so many people who don't come back to church because they never received a phone call. I know I have so many times <coughs> asked somebody for the number, but yet they're just an unused contact in my, in my, in my phone. I never text them. I never take the time to call out of them. And how do they see compassion through that? You see, but because just a phone call, just a text, just a, 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 a lunch, it means the world to people. And I'm sure if, if you just extend that little bit of compassion, people will recognize it. You see, Jesus calls us to love our neighbor. And to love is to actively do what the Lord prefers. God shows his love to us constantly, not just one time. We can never love like God, but we can continue his model of love by not just showing love to people one time, but continuing, following up with them, um, giving them accountability, being accountable for them, making sure they're doing the right thing, making sure they're not falling off, making sure they're not backsliding. Because you never know, you could be the person that determines their eternity. So, so good neighbors go where no one else wants to go. They give up what they value for the sake of others, and they follow up. Now, one of my uncles, he's an MTA driver, and he, um, he, he one day he was driving the bus, and this homeless man comes on, and uh, the man didn't have any fare. He, he really stunk. But um, my uncle didn't someone anyway, and um, the bus, he, to he told me the bus ended up smelling like this man. And so um, my uncle turns around and tells the man, hey, um, this is my last route, so, um, so stay with me and I'll help you out a little bit. Mm -hmm. My uncle finishes his ship, takes this homeless, stinky man to his house, lets the man take a shower, mm -hmm. gives him a whole bottle of Calvin Klein cologne. Like, how many of you guys wear Calvin Klein? Listen, my, my favorite is Eternity, mm -hmm. and I'm convinced that Eternity yeah. smells like Eternity. All right? And, and it's, very, it's very hard for me to give up a bottle of cologne, and you guys know how expensive that is. Yeah. So it, it's very hard for me to... It would be very hard for me to give it up. But my uncle just gave it up, you know, without worrying about, you know, how much it costs. He gave this man brand new clothes, and he gave him $50 to spend. Mm -hmm. Now, if I saw this homeless man, I probably would just do what the Pharisees did, do what this priest did, and, and walk on the other side, of, or in this case, sit on the other side. And it's sad, because this story, it touched me because my uncle was so compassionate, and I was so happy for him that he was showing compassion. But the thing is, my uncle is not safe. Mm. And he did this. And I was also, it got me a little angry at, at both myself and Christians because you know what? If there's people who are not saved doing this, then what makes us different? Mm. You see, a lot of Christians relate more to the priest than the Samaritan. We walk on the other side instead of being compassionate and helping them out. And we do compassionate things within the church. But once we walk out those doors, we forget what compassion is all about. You see, if, if people... Don't know, who don't know Jesus are truly more compassionate. Compassion than us, then what makes us different? Instead of seeking God sometimes, instead of praying, God, bless me with this, bless me with that, you know, help me get that new car, help me, help me get those new headphones. Why don't we ask God to give us the heart to bless others? You see, because it's only, it's only through God where we can receive compassion. It's, it's, it's only through God where we can see the compassion to go where, where no one else wants to go. It's only through God where we can receive the compassion to give up what we value for the sake of others. It's only through God where, that he can give us the ability and, 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 the, and the charge to follow up on people. See, Jeremiah quotes, Compassion does not originate in religion or responsibility, but in a relationship with God. Compassion starts with God. Today is the day that we can start the process of a compassionate heart. A very famous worship song says, break my heart for what breaks yours. I pray that you guys would, would, would uh, pray today that God will break our heart for what breaks his. Mm -hmm. That we will have compassion for what he has compassion for. Thanks.